Hello and welcome into the season two premiere of your next favorite driver right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, go down below, hit that subscribe button. It is free to do. The quicker we get to a thousand subscribers, the quicker YouTube will let us do mobile live streaming which will vastly improve both the quality and quantity of coverage we are able to give you from the track. If this is your first time seeing your next favorite driver, this is a show where we introduce you to young up-and-coming drivers in the world of NASCAR, let you get to know them on more of a personal level, and then you can decide if this might be your next favorite driver. Today's guest on the Season 2 premiere is a driver for Venturini Motorsports in the Arkham Menard Series in 2020. His name is Corey Heim. He's been very successful at the Arca level thus far. Has not won a race just yet, but has not run a full-time season yet either. Ran part-time racing for Chad Bryant Racing last year and then part-time for Venturini Motorsports this year. Didn't get quite as many races in as he had planned this year for Venturini because of the pandemic and everything, how that changed around the schedule but has still really shown his talent this year and shown that he has the potential to go forward in the world of NASCAR. So we're happy to be joined by him today, and we'll go ahead and send you to that interview right now. And we're now joined by driver for Venturini Motorsports in the Arkham Menard Series, Corey Heim on your next favorite driver. Corey, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good. So... The point of this show is for folks to get to know you. So let's get to know you, Corey. Uh, first off, I think this is the biggest question to start off with here. What got you started in racing? What what gave you that drive to become a race car driver? Um, so me and my dad were always kind of interested in the sport. Um, always since I was, you know, two years old, me and him would always sit down on Sundays and watch the NASCAR races. And um, he also raced himself. Uh, he raced Legends cars at uh, Lanier Motor Speedway in Georgia, which is also where I grew up. Um, and he would race basically every weekend during the summer. So um, he would take, a, t take me with him, and I would go watch uh, him race, and I always took such an interest in that. And um, I think when I was four years old that year um, for Christmas, he surprised me with a quarter midget. Um, I had, like, no idea. I didn't even, like, ask for anything but like maybe like a you know my own little like go-kart that i could mess around with but ended up surprising me with a quarter midget um and uh you know it was at my grandparents house which was like right down the road and he uh took me in there he's like okay this is like this is the deal and i'm gonna you know take you racing um and ever since i first you know hopped in it and tested for the first time i was uh like i said four years old at the time uh it was always just you know just from there it, it, where it started i was always so interested in it and um kind of took off from there ended up uh racing quarter midgets for i think eight years and then we moved up into uh bandoleros and legends cars but definitely got my start in quarter midgets and that's uh that's where it all started at four years old so how did you make the transition from those bandoleros and legend cars into now the arkham menard series um it wasn't a uh it wasn't a hard um transition by any means um the legends cars i thought were one of the harder things i ever have driven in my life um they're on those small treaded tires and you got a lot of uh, horsepower to weight ratio and those things so it taught me a lot of things and shifting too you know there's no shifting in bandoleros or quarter midgets so it taught me really everything i needed to know as far as um you know just car control uh shifting things like that and just how to work a clutch um and i started i think my first time in a legends car was for 14 or 13 years old um and we stayed in those for about two years until i felt like i was pretty um acclimated to it but the transition to a late model um it had more grip uh a little it felt like it had a little less power even though it had more just horsepower to weight was a little bit different um but it wasn't an awful transition by any means and i was uh you know grateful to be with a great team and uh, fab specialties at the time um and yeah, we uh, were pretty successful off the bat and finished in the top five a couple of times. And um, eventually in 2018, 2019, we moved up in the Ar Arkham Menard series, uh, which is pretty similar to late model, just a little bit heavier and a little bit more horsepower. So um, it wasn't it wasn't a hard transition by any means, but it was definitely about just learning new things and getting acclimated to it. So since you've been in the Arkham Menard series, you've, you've been part-time. You haven't had a full-time season yet. In fact, ran less races this year than you did last year. How do you keep yourself uh, focused and kind of in shape for next time you get in the track to, to put in your best performance 
uh, like you did at Pensacola this week, uh, almost picking up the win there. Yeah, it's definitely tough to um, stay sharp, especially when, you know, just because of COVID, we don't have uh, very much practice. And uh, now that we're ARCA is NASCAR, we don't get to test uh, nearly as much as we did before. So, um, you know, with the less races and everything, it's definitely tough. But I think it's just about um, listening to people um, when they tell you, you know, what you need to be doing, what you need to be doing from the time you get to the track and, the, and in the race, especially when I haven't ever seen the track before, such as uh, Dover a couple, I think it was like a month and a half ago by now. Um, never seen that track before in my life. And you get 30 minutes of practice and then you go right into the race. So um, it's definitely not easy by any means, especially in a track like Dover. It's a very challenging racetrack. Um, but luckily, uh, Toyota gave me some sim time for that racetrack. And I uh, just took a lot of people's advice that have seen the racetrack before. And um, without that, I think I would have, I would be struggling a lot more than I am now. So let's jump back now to the childhood. Uh, who was your favorite driver growing up? Uh, definitely has to be Denny Hamlin. Um, I've always been a Denny fan. Um, I'm not sure how I uh, grew to like him so much. I think it's just his determination. Um, you know, I think I started cheering for him really hard in 2008 or so, so a little over like 10 years ago when he was just getting started. So um, ever since then, he's always been a favorite driver and still is. And uh, he's having a really good run this year, so hoping to see him uh, continue that. Interesting choice. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Uh, Denny's yeah, not one of the right. people you expect to hear right off the bat there. So good choice, right. though. I uh, it. So in terms of tracks you have been to so far or maybe tracks that you want to go to, uh, what's what's your favorite track right now? Definitely Winchester. Um, I've been there twice now, uh, both times just for the Winchester 400 and a super late model. Um, and uh, I think the year that I went there is when Arca stopped going there. Of course, they just raced there, but it wasn't originally on the schedule. So we didn't. And if it was, I definitely would have, you know, tried to vouch to go there in an Arca car for sure, because I just really love that racetrack. It's um, I think it's in its prime right now, just as far as uh, multi groove racing. <clears throat> I didn't really get to see the Arca race, um, but I did watch the replay and uh, it seemed like a pretty good race. I mean, it was um, they didn't race side by side much, but I think the super late models are like, perfect for that racetrack. And um, it's a long race, too. 400 laps in the super late model is a long, long race. But I, uh, I loved every minute of it both times I went. And we finished second there last year, so it's hard to not like a racetrack when you, you know, finish well there. So so that must have hurt not being able to do even the Arkham Menard Series race there this year or the Winchester 400 this year. Yeah, it was it was frustrating for sure. Just I know it's um, just circumstantial with, you know, coronavirus and everything going on, just shifting around our schedule. And we were – you know, originally planning to do the 400 this year ever since the beginning of the year, of course, because, you know, I really love that racetrack. But, um, you know, it ever so happened that in March we were just getting ready to leave for Pensacola, and uh, they called it, I think, the day before the race. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, dating back to then, I had no idea that it was going to, you know, run over the Winchester 400, but unfortunately that's just uh, how it went. So um, maybe next year, hopefully next year. Um, but uh, if it doesn't happen, then I'll definitely – be able to see that track one day again definitely so uh so far in your career i know you haven't had too much so far i mean you've had a little arc experience late models that sort of thing and talk about bandolers and quarter midgets what's your most memorable moment in your career thus far um i would have to probably say this year uh speed fest win was definitely a very memorable moment for me um just because we that was my first race with the super late model team jet motorsports um and they really brought me a good piece we qualified second and that's also my home racetrack so or it's, it's really two and a half hours away from my my home in marietta georgia but um we still consider it my home racetrack because it's really it's really hard to come by tracks in georgia asphalt tracks at least so um you know to go to one of my home track and the biggest race of the year there one of the biggest races in general on my schedule uh was awesome and um you know couldn't have been in better fashion, we had a really, really good race to the checkered flag. So I'm never going to forget that moment, and I think that's definitely my most memorable so far. So I feel like I know the answer to this one, but what is your ultimate goal in racing? Where do you want to be and say that you've done at the end of your career? Yeah, I definitely, uh, of course, want to be in the Cup Series one day. Um, but at all costs, I just want to, uh, you know, get a solid ride at some point. I don't want to, I don't want to be a back marker, a mid tier team. I want to, you know, always be able to compete for wins. Um, I'd rather 
compete for wins at a lower level than compete for you know 20th place at, at the highest level so um just to be just to be successful really i just um you know my I'm determined to one day just just be a successful race car driver, whether it's um, in a in a mid tier uh, league or you know the Cup Series. So of course my ultimate goal is to get to the Cup Series, but I I just want to be a successful race car driver at some point in my career. So one thing I've noticed over the past couple of years of you being in the Arkham Menard Series is you've been really good at these dirt races. Where does that come from? Um, to be honest with you, um, I I don't. I really didn't expect to be so acclimated to the dirt tracks right off the bat. Um, I always seem to take to, uh, when I race the Legends cars, I always seem to take to the rain really good, just sliding around, finding where the grip was, or I guess the uh, the lack of wetness was on the racetrack, where the dry spots were, which is ultimate where, ultimately where the grip was. But um, I always took to that really well, so I always look forward to, you know, if the forecast was showing some rain, I always look forward to the racing um, that night. But, um, you know, the dirt tracks, I really had no idea what to expect. But first time out there, we were really, really quick. Uh, contended for the win last year at Springfield and then finished, I think it was, I think it was in the podium at, at DuCoin. And then, uh, you know, obviously contended for the win again this past, I guess, two weekends ago now <clears throat> at uh, Illinois State Fairgrounds. So um, I don't know where it quite came from. I think the Legends cars really helped me in that and racing in the rain, just a lot of throttle control and car control just sliding around out there is always fun. Just this past weekend at Pensacola, we were sliding around the whole time and, you know, we found ourselves at the front later in the race. So um, I always just kind of been acclimated to those, uh, you know, lack of grip racetracks. And I guess that's where it comes from. So what you're telling me with the rain is that if you had been at the Daytona road course, you'd have given selfie a run for his money. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I mean, I looked like it really, really took a driver to get around that track, but um, uh, I would definitely have to find out one day if uh road course racing in the rain was for me, but that's just something that's uh, definitely way unique in its own and just way different than I've ever experienced. So, I mean, that would definitely be an awesome race to be a part of, but man, it, it certainly looked tough. So if you weren't racing, what is it that you would do? What do you feel like you've got the skill set to do if for some reason racing doesn't work out for you? I don't know. Um, that's a tough question for sure, because my, my life has always been, you know, surrounded by racing. Um, and man, I've always been really into sports and stuff. So maybe just get into some kind of like uh, some kind of organization with sports, just like maybe some coaching or something like that. I've always felt like I'm somewhat of a good teacher. So maybe just some kind of coaching job or uh, maybe I'll pursue like a, a crew chiefing job in some other kind of racing uh, or motorsports organization. So uh, maybe along that kind of line. And uh, if I if I take some college classes, which I'm planning to do next year, and I uh, seem to like you know, that kind of, uh, career path and maybe I'll pursue it a little bit harder. Okay. So here's a, here's a different question for you. So if you could pick any one driver in NASCAR history to one V one, who would it be and why? Man, that's tough. Um, it is a lot lot of different uh, directions you could go with this. (laughs) Yeah, I know. That's tough. I really, can't pull one off the top of my head i mean denny hamlin would definitely be one of them but i feel like that's such a such a basic answer just just because Denny's so good at like tracks like darlington which i've always really wanted to compete at he uh he really is good at running the fence same thing with kyle larson kyle larson would be another one just to i feel like i'd learn more than him rather than just you know compete against them in general just because they're so good at running like inches away from the wall which i have uh not been good at so far in my argument career i've hit the wall at salem i don't know how many times so um <clears throat> just to learn from those guys would be good but uh i don't know maybe come back to me on that it's uh it's definitely a different different style question but it's uh it's it's tough for sure what about somebody maybe you hated and you just want the chance to beat them <laughs> yeah that's a good one too <laughs> that's a good one too definitely definitely plenty of drivers that uh in the past that just you know were so unique in their own that'd be nice to just kind of see what they were doing so different than everyone else. Just like, I mean, Dale Earnhardt, obviously he was so successful, um, you know, in his whole career, just what he did different and what made him so good would be interesting to learn from. All right. So let's maybe shift a little bit away from racing now and, or this, I guess could be racing related too. what's one interesting thing about you that maybe nobody knows or not a lot of people know. Um, dang, let's see. 
I'm actually like really into uh, just uh, Pittsburgh sports. I'm a huge Pittsburgh sports fan. Um, my dad grew from up in Georgia. You're and, into Pittsburgh sports. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I grew up in Georgia. My dad is from Pittsburgh. My mom's from okay. Chicago. Um, we visit Pittsburgh every year and every time we go up there, we'll always, of course not this year, but we always try to go to, uh, sports games up there, whether it's like a Penguins game, I'm a huge Penguins fan, huge Steelers fan. I also like the Pirates, um, really into Pittsburgh sports. Um, we always, like I said, we always try to go to games up there. Um, and I always have been, I've really never taken a liking to any other team and, uh, all my family from up there, I have aunts and uncles up there. They're all really big pittsburgh sports fans of course as well so that's that's one thing that a lot of people don't know about me but um yeah i think it's i think it's just something that really defines me i've always just i've always tuned in on sundays or whatever day the penguins would play as well just to uh just to cheer them on okay all right so to end off here we're gonna play a little game i had i think i had to explain this to you before we started here it was <laughs> this or that uh for anybody that doesn't know very simple game more kind of rapid fire here i'm just gonna name off two things for you and you're going to say which one you like better. If you want to explain why, go ahead. Um, Sounds good. So first one, we'll throw you a softball here for the first one. Cats or dogs? Uh, dogs for sure. I actually got my dog right here. His nice. name's Bristol, nice. Golden Retriever. Uh, so dogs for sure, but I, I don't mind cats. I'm not like a cat hater by any means, but um, I do have a dog, and I live by myself in Davidson now at North Carolina, and my dog's pretty much all my company that I have for the time being, so... I'd have to say dogs for that one. Dogs is the only company you need. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, burgers or tacos? Ooh, man. Most of the time it will depend on the day, but if I could only have one for the rest of my life, I'd probably have to go with burgers for sure. Okay. Just kind of an American classic. Like I've actually taken, ever since I moved up near Mooresville, there's a lot of good like tacos places and stuff like that. So tacos have been kind of like, my thing lately, but I think if I had to live off of one thing, it'd be it'd be burgers. Okay, fair enough. Cake or pie? Uh, I have to go with cake for that one. I love, interesting enough, I love carrot cake. Uh, not a lot of people do that I know, but every single birthday that I've ever had, I've always asked for carrot cake. So okay. <laughs> I have to go with cake for that. Uh, dirt track or pavement? Hmm, man. Um, probably for the time being, pavement. Uh, if I maybe pursue like some more dirt racing one day, just because we've always done good on the Arca side of dirt, um, maybe I'll change my answer. But for now, pavement for sure. Okay. Uh, TV shows or movies? TV shows. Um, I think movies are just a little bit too stretched out for me. I always kind of lose interest unless it's like really, really good. But TV shows have always been kind of just my way of going, just so I can go like one short piece at a time, if that makes sense. I'm the same way. I feel like I can get more invested in characters on TV shows, too. I feel like I can't do that in a yeah. two-hour block in a movie. Yeah, and most movies, like, I feel like um, they try, even if it's, like, a, a shorter storyline, they still try to fit too much in in, like, a two-hour period of time, while, mm -hmm. like, a TV show all in all is probably, could be up to, like, ten hours long, depending on how many seasons or whatever. So right. I feel like it's easier just to make a good storyline with a TV show. Uh, passenger or driver? Hmm. Depending on the length of a trip, like me and my dad pretty much always travel together. If he, uh, if it's like not terribly far away, if it's like in the Midwest or the West, we'll, we'll fly. But, uh, I'll definitely make my dad drive if it's like a long trip, but if it's like 30 minutes or less, I'll always want to drive. Okay. And we're going to end off with the most important question of all toilet paper over or under. Okay. Um, <laughs> over being like, yeah, over being close. To, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I get it now. Yeah. Over for sure. Okay. Yep. The under, the under people are weird, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> weird in that matter. I, I would have had to rethink everything I thought about you if you'd said under. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm glad I picked the right answer. There you go. So I think that's going to do it. Uh, hopefully. Uh, everybody learned some new things about you and maybe you picked up some new fans from this. That's the point of this. If anyone is interested in following you on the social media or anywhere on the internet, let them know where they can find you. Yeah. So on Instagram, it's going to be Corey Daheim. Twitter is, uh, Corey Heim three. And then my dad controls my Facebook. It's just Corey Heim racing. That's where you're going to find most of like just constant updates and stuff like that is going to be Facebook, just weekly updates, schedule changes, things like that. So Facebook's definitely the place to go, which is Corey Heim Racing. But uh, those are my main three 
uh, social media platforms. All right, yeah, so definitely go follow Corey on all of that and keep up with everything he's doing. Uh, do you have any more races the rest of this year? Are you going to go play on the west side at all for the rest of the year? Yeah, we're racing Kansas this weekend, actually. Okay, we're going to yeah, be yeah. in the uh, <clears throat> we're gonna be in the number 10 car uh, under Andy Hillenberg, but it's going to be a better any car. So okay. um, we're using that to start a little bit better than we would if we were in like a 55 or something like that. Right. So anyway, Kansas this weekend, and then we go to Phoenix, actually, for the west race, the ARCA West finale i think it would be um in november i want to say which is cup championship weekend it's gonna be really fun um and then we're also racing the snowball derby in the super late model all american 400 in the super late model and then we got that um 30, to win race in the late model stock which is in not this weekend but next weekend so some big races to cap off the year i'm really looking forward to it it's definitely like the uh most important time of the year to just you know capitalize on my opportunities so uh we'll see what happens all right, so yeah, that's everywhere that you can see Corey for the rest of the year. Hopefully we uh, see him in victory lane before the end of the year, too. I think it's going to happen. So yeah. um, that, I think, is going to do it for this uh, edition of Your Next Favorite Driver. So, Corey, thanks for joining us, and uh, good luck in all that for the rest of the year. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. I, I hope I get in victory lane, too, man. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Again, we want to thank Corey for joining us today on Your Next Favorite Driver. It was a pleasure talking to him, as always. He's a great guy to talk to, and hopefully that came across to you as well, and maybe quite possibly he could be your next favorite driver. That is the point of this show, after all, is to introduce you to guys like him so you can make the decision as he continues to progress through the ranks about whether or not he will be your favorite driver. So that's going to do it for us today. The plan is to have this be an every Thursday kind of show, just depending on how we can get the interview set up. Uh, that's the plan is to be every Thursday, but it may we may skip a Thursday here or there, just depending on what happens with schedules and that sort of thing. But So look out for episode two of season two of Your Next Favorite Driver next Thursday. Uh, not 100% sure who's that going, who's that, who that is going to be yet, but... Uh, it should be somebody good for you and a very viable candidate for your next favorite driver. So as always, we want to thank our Patreon supporter, Regional Manager William Holmes. Thank you, as always, for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you would like to be a patron of Racing News Now, the link is down below in the description. Patreon.com slash Racing News Now. But at that, this has been your next favorite driver. As always, I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.